What's up guys, Ivan Carranza here and welcome to Bass Tone Tuesday. Today we're gonna talk about palm muting and other than focusing on some of the EQ aspects of it, we're also gonna talk about the technique of palm muting to achieve the best sound possible. And for this we're gonna be using the GNL Fullerton Deluxe JB Bass and the Mess Engineering Subway DI preamp. The signal chain is bass, the Mesa preamp into my interface, nothing else happening. And as a reference, I'm using my Yamaha monitors. So let me show you real quick how the bass sounds with the EQ set flat and both volumes fully up and the tone control as well. <laughs> Right? That's how the bass sounds. Now, what is palm muting exactly? Well, you have to use kind of like the, the meaty part of your hand to dampen the strings here at the bridge. So just to give you a better visual perspective, I'm gonna raise my chair a little bit. You can mute or dampen the strings to varying degrees depending on the tone that you want to achieve. Now, you probably don't want to place your hand on top of the bridge pickup, for example, because that, that really kills the note. Yeah. You don't hear any harmonic or, or you, know, you don't hear any note content. Now, if you start moving a bit backwards, You still, you know, you, you open up note a bit more until you are not dampening anymore. So you probably don't want to place your hand at the, you know, the sp springs that are here because that is not muting at all. You don't want to go too far up. For me, ideally, it's usually right in front of the bridge saddles. So this is where the saddles are. And there you are already muting a little bit. Just a bit, not too much, just a bit. I prefer to just move it just in front of the bridge saddles. This is on top. This is right ahead. For me that gives me the best ratio of muting and also note content. So like I mentioned you don't want to go too far up close to the pickup here at the bridge. That kills the note. You don't want to go too far behind because you're not dampening at all. You just want to be right ahead of the bridge saddles. To get that dampened sound and also some good low end content with note definition. So now that we've covered the hand position, we have to talk about the use of the thumb a little bit. And this is something that took me a bit to figure out, you know, with some experience of playing a bit, that you don't really need a lot of strength on your thumb while playing to create the notes, especially if you want to have like a like a pillow of low end. Let me demonstrate just playing with one note. So I'm damping right ahead of the bridge saddles. And I'm plucking very lightly. If I pluck really hard, right? First of all, I send very loud percussive spikes and I choke the note a little bit. You hear it like cluck, 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 cluck. If I play softly, play hard, it's kind of a, a bit choky. There are situations where you might want that, but if you want to provide kind of like a pillow of low end with that muted sound, you probably want to ease on the attack of your thumb. A 
let me show you the same thing on the E string. I'm playing really hard there compared to. You know, you get like that kind of choked note. Maybe you don't necessarily want that. So pay attention to your thumb. And you know, when you play lightly, you also get more stamina out of your hands. So you have to play a whole song going like. If you're plugging really hard the whole time, your thumb's gonna just cramp up. Now, so far we've been using both pickups and the toe control fully open. And that is a great sound, of course. You can definitely just go with this and be, you know, set. You don't have to change anything if you don't want to. Uh, especially if you want to keep one setting for a whole show, for example. You don't have to mess around with the tone controls. But if you want to go more specific uh, on the sound of your palm muting, to me there are like two options on a, on a to pick a bass. And the first one would be to just use the neck pickup. And this, to me, gives you a really nice response when playing. The playing field changes a bit. Compared to... When you use the neck pickup only, it feels a bit more squishy to my ears, at least. And you also get some more, more bottom a bit, depending on what kind of bass you have, of course. And in the case of the jazz bass with two volumes, what you can also do is roll the bridge pickup just a hair back. Like this is both fully on. Slightly rolled off. And this makes a huge difference in playing feel, at least to me. Um, it might not be a huge difference in sound, but it is to me while playing, it feels different already. I prefer it like either neck pickup only or just rolling slightly that bridge pickup. So far, we've had the tone control fully open as well. And just to keep things a bit more consistent, I'm just gonna use the neck pickup only from here onwards. So let me play the same kind of groove with different amounts of tone control. So. Fully open, now 50%. Fully closed. Again. Right, so there's a difference. And to me, if you want to have a more, more aggressive, more grunty kind of tone, you can leave the tone control fully open. If you want to go more supportive, I would probably go around like 50, 60% of the tone control. And if you could hear like when you close it all the way, it gets a bit nasal, like da da da. Especially on the jazz bass, if you're not boosting any kind of bass, or just like this. I prefer, if, you, if I want to really heavily close the tone control, I prefer to just before fully closing it. I prefer this over. I prefer it just before. But I'm gonna go for now with like, I would say 60% open. So 
So, if you've been paying attention, I sometimes have thrown in my index finger here. And this is a good way to, you know, add notes to the grooves that you maybe can't play with the thumb because you would have to skip strings the whole time. And this is just like using the index finger, kind of like a hook, using the, the tip of my, my index finger to to plug the string. This is useful to play octaves, for example. You know, you can play like this. If you didn't use the index finger, you have to jump with your thumb. It gives you a different sound, uh, a bit thinner, but also, you know, it stands out in the mix as well. Kind of a bit more, a bit more mids, um, so that helps when you're playing with, you know, other people. One of my former teachers, like he's really, really good at palm muting, and I think one of his lifelong quests is to get the index finger to sound as closely to the thumb as possible. And what he would do is that when palm muting, he would try to play with the index kind of like horizontally to the string. So he wasn't using the tip, but more like the whole meat of the finger. So you can experiment with that, just, you know, using more of the meat of, the, of your index finger to... And also trying to pluck closer to where your thumb would be plucking. I can do that, I, I haven't really practiced it that much, but if you wanna try to go that way, you can definitely try that. Let's move on to the EQ section here. So far, like I said earlier, everything has been flat, and I wouldn't like go crazy on the EQ for this kind of thing. I would definitely go like and just add some bass to have a bit of a comfort bump, so maybe like, like there, there's not that much. Right, compared to... Just a little bit of bass to, to make the, the sound a bit more pillowy, to provide a bit more, you know, more support. If you wanna go like full on, like Robbie Shakespeare dub reggae style, you can definitely boost some more bass. Yeah, you can definitely go that way, but it's not like necessary. Just a little bit of bass definitely takes you a long way, so you don't have to like over EQ. A big part of the sound is definitely on the technique side of it. Maybe if you want to, you can just, just a hair, a little bit of low mids. That's gonna give you a bit more body on the sound. But not too much, because if you boost them too much, doesn't sound that that bassy it sounds kind of a bit boxy so you don't want to go like too much just just a little bit now let's check out this tone with some drums I hope you guys liked the video. 
Let me know in the comments what kind of tones would you like me to dial in for future episodes. And also, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay up to date with the content that's coming to your channel. Thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Take care.